Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation of the ECL Elite Division right here on Sports Gamer. My name is Doogie, joined as always by my broadcast partner, Mr. Sin, for the win. And Sin, today we get to wrap up our opening week of our spring season here within the Elite Division. And what an opening week it's been so far. Yeah, it is. Uh, been quite the action so far. I mean, we see uh, saw some of the uh, more top teams uh, performing uh, in, in yesterday's cast, and today we get to see some teams who last season, you know, many of them on the outside looking in, but all of them with those sort of playoff aspirations and trying to get into that playoff hunt and some interesting lineup changes uh, to kind of go along with it to give them that extra push. Again, still kind of getting our footing now for this season after all the changes that we saw. As Sin mentioned, uh, with some of those changes, we will see some of those new, uh, dare I say, superstar caliber players in their new spots. But you also mentioned the standings. Let's take a look at the very early standings, of course, this season. Not every team has played at least their opening series. Again, a 30-game regular season, playing at least the two games or you know the two games against the other 15 teams within the league and of course and as we always mention left hand side of the brackets where you want to be by the end of the season those top eight make the playoffs and what a start so far it is for the likes of Fralunda, a perfect four and oh after bringing on flyer kung and of course the former captain of Havu, who have also had a somewhat decent start, but obviously still uh, a little bit too early to, to be, you know, overly judgmental towards these sides. Yeah, absolutely. I think even four games and, you know, your start, you can easily turn it around with a with one good uh, day, essentially. But, you know, the same breath, you can also kind of lose that. But we expected to see, you know, Frillin to get off to uh, a pretty solid start. We expect him to be at the top of that bracket, especially with some of the changes that they made him. It's going to be very, very interesting seeing, you know, how they get on throughout the course of the season. Goons as well, obviously a very good start. They, you know, want to seed maybe a little bit higher than they did in this last season. Some could call it a regression, though, again, still in the playoffs. And yeah, as you said, the season very early still. So much ground can be made up. So much ground can be lost. So every single matchup just as important as the last. Well, you mentioned some of those results for Goons. Let's get you guys a look at the latest results as well from around the league. Again, through the first two to four matches for each of these teams. And again, for Lunda, off to that perfect 4-0 start. And you see how we covered it on Sunday. Uh, of course, our, our primetime edition of the Elite coverage. Of course, they pulled off the double over Sawo and then the double over YMCA. And I mean, Sin, YMCA had a decent little start there too, earning that split against Ippy Voskala. So shutting them out back to back is uh, beyond impressive, I would say, in the early stages of a season when Forlunda made some very big changes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're off to a flying start. And YMCA, you know, one of those teams not projected to do too well in the standings, but have been a team in the past where they have been in the playoffs here. And, you know, they have done quite well. I think it was the first time Atreds began to kind of climb their way up uh, up the playoff bracket. They defeated uh, YMCA, who I believe had a different name at that time. It was in a, <laughs> on the back of a crazy shorthanded goal. So YMCA, you know, no strangers to the playoff format here in the ECL Elite. And they're going to want to get back. And as an underdog, you got to watch out for those underdogs. You never quite know when one of them is due to have themselves a good season and push the way into the playoffs like we saw from the likes of IQ uh, this last season. And you see there, uh, you know, they split the series against HV71. So HV71, who we're about to cover, 101 start to this season and taking on a team like IQ who made the playoffs in that fifth seed. I mean, it's not a bad start. Absolutely. So with that, let's set the stage for you here. Our first matchup of two on the day. We have HV71 taking on Uribro Hockey. Again, Sin, one win for the two of these teams. But, I mean, how about that difference, though, through these games? I mean, Uribro, the win, despite uh, that minus three goal differential in those first two games. Yeah. You know, one kind of solid performance and another... Uh... Uh, I guess you could just call it a stinker there for Adebro and HG71. It's just looked like very, very controlled game. It's you could you look at that goals for goals against and it, it even if it was just one game, that's not a whole heck of a lot for either of those columns. But that was two games worth here. So, you know, very, uh, very much an emphasis on defense by the looks of it so far for HG71. However, you know, they're going to want to put a few more goals on the board. Good, good penalty kill and. 0% on the power play right now. So it's seeming like they got their defense all situated. 
but are they going to be able to get that goal scoring going without sacrificing anything on the back end? The uh, lineups for these two teams for Urubro Hockey. We have a front three of Yakari, Pickery, and Iansku on that right hand side. Terry and Miga Buna on defense. Ellie Kamel between the pipes, but sitting on the other side for HV71. Maybe the most intriguing player of this group. It is Antonio Manon again. Some refer to him as arguably the best Swedish winger that we have within the elite division. He is now, of course, joining Dembski and Madaliska as a part of that front three. The rookie in Kauto alongside Rubitas, of course, formerly a forward with the likes of Feriastad and Kopelainen between the pipes for them. And let's get into these individual breakdowns as we do. Again, Pikari against Dembski is the center matchup here. And a bit of a slow start for Dembski, not so much on the other side uh, for the Urubro centerman. Yeah, very polarizing figures here after just two games played. I mean, five points in those two games for Picari there. It's absolutely impressive to go along with his 55.8 faceoff percentage now. And it's not too often you see a margin this wide in all the categories here. But again, it's very, very early on. Just two games played for that. Dembski wants to get his scoring touch going. It's kind of been symptomatic of the entire team that, you know, only two goals for in those two games played where they did split that series. So. You know, everyone's going to be looking to get on the scoring sheet a little bit more. Strong face-off numbers there as well. But again, and as you mentioned, just two games played. The winger battle again for Urbra uh, Hockey Yakari alongside Iansku. And again, Antonio Manon next to Madaliska. And I mean, Sin, again, we don't have a ton to go off of in the early stages. A little bit more physicality, though, from the Urbra uh, wingers. Yeah, definitely, you know. It's, you know, these they always have these stats early on, especially you have to be taking, you know, a little bit with a grain of salt, but you can kind of get maybe at least a slight glimpse of the kind of, you know, the play style or the team mentality here, you know, Janska, uh more than doubling his winger partner in shots, you know, take for that uh, for what you will. But yeah, you know, a little bit more phys physical presence from Edebro there as well. So we'll see if that comes into play here in this matchup. And our defensive matchup next again for Urbro, Terity and Migo Buna, the rookie Kauto alongside Rubitas for HV71. Sin, anything really jump off the page for you here? I mean, whether or not it's the stats or just what we know about these players. Yeah, for me, it's we're going to have to take a look and see what Kauto is going to bring to the table uh, for this HV71 squad. Obviously, so far, so good on the defensive end of things, so... You know, you want to look to him to be able to be a, you know, very steady, a solid presence back there. Kind of not a whole lot of figures. Zero shots blocked. Does have a few hits here. So uh, we know about as much as him as his portrait reveals right there. We're going to have to, you know, get our eye test going here on the sheet. But, you know, we know what we can kind of get from Terity and Migo Buna. Um, both, you know, pretty solid defensemen can both, you know, jump up, play, contribute on the offensive side of things. And obviously Rupitas been in the elite division for quite some time here an experienced partner there for Kauto. The goaltenders round out these head-to-head -head previews again. It is Eli Kamel against Kofelainen. A very rough start for Eli Kamel through those two games, whereas on the flip side, Kofelainen was fantastic for HV71 against, and they were 1-0-1 through their first two games if he can play like that for the rest of this season i mean the bar yeah. the bar has been set high in terms of what's realistic for somebody but uh that is again as perfect of a start as you can really hope for yeah absolutely basing you know stop the count for kofa line and i mean those stats are absolutely monstrous so far and hv71 getting off to the start that they want and again complete polar opposite on the flip side when it comes to ellie Kamel. you know not the start that he wanted and it, it's in such a small sample size, you really feel like it was that one game to do them. You know, they have a negative three goal differential despite having the split in their first series. So it was really just one kind of game that sort of, you know, sunk his stats down there. We know Eli Camelli is a very solid goaltender. Going to be looking to improve those numbers, especially in this matchup. And against a team which so far has only scored two goals in two games played. This could be a good chance for him to sort of uh, get back on top of his stats. So again, we are just a few moments away from puck drop game one of two between these two clubs. And of course, a little bit later on as well, we see the return of the fallen coal miners to this broadcast. Again, it's their first season as a group. 
Uh, they are back for the first time since season seven of the ECL. They'll be taking on Conquer Gaming. And of course, a reminder as well, we are here every Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday with Elite Division action. Every Tuesday, we have some Pro Division action for you. And again, Sin, this is what's coming up this Sunday. Again, the special start time two hours earlier than our Monday and Wednesday broadcasts. This is what we have for you. HV71 mm-hmm. will be in action again. Still take on YMCA Esports. And for the first time since this season, our two-time defending champions in H-Reds will be in action as they take on Goons, which, as we saw just a few minutes ago, they're off to a pretty good start so far. And I'm really excited for that matchup against Goons. I mean, remember, they did face each other off uh, in the first round, I do believe. So, and Goons took them to overtime, I think, three out of the four games. I mean, it was the Goons was just a team that kept hanging around against H-Reds. And I'm really excited for that matchup because obviously it looks like Goons have sort of improved themselves. And they're going to definitely want to try to take that split against H-Reds. And I mean, how much of a kind of message would that send for a team like Goons to take some games off of H? shreds and sort of show the rest of the league that the titans on top of the mountain right now can be beaten and you know they can be beaten by one of those younger younger up-and-coming teams here in the elite division the goal for this season for basically every team knock H Reds off of the mountaintop again. It's our new split season format winter and spring. H Reds winning that winter season means they are guaranteed a spot in our new grand final that will take place in the middle of June, unless H Reds also win our spring season. In which case, in that's an extra 16,000 euros that'll be handed right to them upon the conclusion of this spring season. Another team certainly wants their shot at a $10,000 or 10,000 euro prize pool. Excuse me there. So, I mean, Sin, again, a lot to play for this season. You get a look at the numbers there. Again, a phenomenal prize pool that has been put together for these teams. Yeah, absolutely. And again, there's always something to play for. We talk about it all the time, whether you're trying to get into the playoffs, maintain your seating or try to just stay in the elite division. That's what's so great. And the season just flies by. You know, we're almost done with week one. That is essentially one sixth of the way through the regular season. It seems like so long when we start off. But as soon as you're towards the end of it, you're kind of looking back and wondering how it went. I can only imagine what it's like to to play under that kind of, you know, uh, that sort of circumstance where on paper, it looks like you have that am- amount of time to, you know, get yourself back into things, but it disappears so, so quickly. Every single game, so important. It's going to feel that much shorter for me here, too, missing out on week two coverage, unfortunately. I'm really, uh, really kicking myself for the timing uh, of this break that I'm going to be on. We should mention as well, of course, I alluded towards it, our Elite Division coverage every, again, Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. We have our Pro Division coverage on Tuesday, but as well here at Sports Gamer. Uh, The NHL esports scene is not the only thing uh, that we cover here. Right here tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit of FIFA action on Sports Gamer. You see there. Uh, Sin, you want to take a shot at making sure that uh, we pronounce the uh, the name of this properly when when we uh, haven't had to before? I'll I'll throw you Um. under the bus. Absolutely not. I'll throw who made the graphic under the box because they they spelled Twitch wrong. So let's divert the attention to there and not to our that would be horrible attempt at pronunciation of this and Mm. chat would rise up against us and we'd never be able to work for sports gamer ever again. Hey, our our finish, our Swedish, it's gotten better. Over the past couple of years, you know, we've we've taken some Duolingo lessons. We're getting prepared uh, if we were ever to get the call to go over there. It is worth mentioning as well. You would have seen it at the top of the broadcast. Uh, the Wilhelm E-Hockey Tour going on. Again, all the information you need for that on sportsgamer.gg. A tournament focused uh, upon the, uh, the Finnish contingent that we have here with the Sports Gamer viewers and competitive players players alike two to four players per team ten thousand euro prize pool at stake again sportsgamer.gg for all the information that you need on the e-hockey tour brought to you by Wilhelm and of course in as well just in general sportsgamer.gg has all the information that you need when it comes to everything that we have going on within the world of sports gamer the ECL elite division our other tiers as well so much going on here And again, we should be just about good to go. Here's hoping uh, for the start 
of this first game. And, you know, I look towards what this matchup's going to be. And, you know, Sim, we, we talk about Urubro and HV71, and it's two teams that are, I kind of think, in that bubble position. You know, it was HV71's first season back in our winter season here in the Elite Division. They're able to maintain their place. Urubro Hockey, they've flirted with playoff positions before. They're certainly looking to take that jump up. So both of these two teams have to view this as a matchup where, you know, hey, these points are potentially more realistic to take than it would be against a, a team like H Reds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you every opportunity is is so, so massive, as we mentioned, in, in just, just a 30-game season. When you play a series against someone, that's, you know, two games. That's It's a solid kind of portion of your season. Those four points or possible four points, I mean, getting them to add up, it, it can be incredible. HG71 already off to that solid start by picking up three out of four points. They want to try to do something similar today. So this first game between these two is going to be very important. You have a team... Uh, and Edinburgh, who kind of, you know, has some mixed results so far. And then HV71, who has very, very solid defensive game, but trouble scoring. So something's got to give in this matchup between these two teams. There we go. So we see these teams in the lobby now going over the uh, player types. Perhaps not as uh, not as diverse as maybe some people thought it would be uh, with this change in system. Of course, this year, NHL 22 highlighted uh, by the new abilities, the zone abilities and such. But uh, as you always see in games like this, uh, when you have builds, meta builds become a thing. And needless to say, uh, the puck moving defensemen, with the exception of the centers typically being playmakers, they are the go-to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, puck possession, such an important part of kind of uh, the way the the Europeans here play, uh, approach NHL. You know, it's very much a puck control uh, fast mobility type style and you'll see that reflective in their builds and you know we, we have seen the outliers of course you always think of off with his running his tiny sniper or someone like i dangled you out running his uh more uh larger power forward presence but yeah it's you know as, as long as you know your build and know how to make it work i mean you can kind of usually run with just about everything but at the highest level yeah absolutely it's it's hard to not see those metas really kind of take shape and form so with that, everybody, again, they're on the ice. We are just about ready to go. The regular season matchup, HV71 and Urubro Hockey, the first game of two, this home-at-home -home setup that we have here within the Elite Division. Very excited to see how this one plays out. Again, high expectations. It's early on in the season, again, the opening week. So in terms of the expectations for this season, a lot of these teams, of course, still feeling confident and optimistic. We'll see how long that lasts, perhaps, because on a game-to-game -game basis, you never know what you're going to get. But the action's underway. HB71 in their home blues, or a bro in the road whites. And again, as always, keep an eye out for the teammates wearing the golden helmet as signifying the team leading the scorer. And Sin, I mean, I don't know how long it will last, but Rubitas, the right defenseman for HV71, currently in possession. And, of course, the centerman, Peekery, loses that one. Good shot on and the good save by Kofalainen. It is Peekery uh, wearing the uh, golden helmet for his team in Urubro as this one goes back to the neutral zone. An interesting start so far. Another team really able to establish a whole lot as Kauto kind of bobbles the puck right there. But, uh, yeah, neutral zone, we always kind of see, is a battleground. But... Neither of these two teams, I mean, you know, it, lower in the standings have been quite known for, uh, you know, the, the big, big steady presence at the blue line, at least, in, you know, in past seasons. So at times you'd think it could be easier to uh, gain the zone. However, HV71 had a bit of trouble just getting out of their own zone. A couple bobbles and missed passes there. So see if they could settle it down in this neutral zone draw. Eliska not able to dangle his way around Terity. Apologize for any potential interruptions. Let's see what Rubro can do. That puck just behind. It was a short side bid for Iansku. No drag by Madaliska. Now it's Dembski on the back end. Has it poked away. The defender like Terity there for Urubro. You got to make your decisions quick. And how close was that? To Pikari picking that one up. Getting a dangerous opportunity. Adelaiska again not able to hold on to it. Rubitas can't either. It's Yakari now into the attacking zone. Put the dish back to the point. That one accidentally, I would say, cleared all the way down, and we'll have our first icing call of the game. 
Yeah, definitely looked like uh, maybe going for a bump right there, but flashing back to that close call and Pikari almost kind of picking up the puck. It was Kalto in great position who was able to scoop that up and then uh, took it sort of behind his net, really kind of cool with it. Didn't panic and that's really a good job by him because that could have been a dicey situation with that puck right in front of his goaltender. And a loose puck trickling down, foot race for it. Antonio Mannon's gonna win this across and what a stop by Ellie Kamel. Great work by Antonio Manon, hustling on that one. Unfortunately, Dembski just not able to find the back of the net. Tremendous pass as well, and I think definitely worth noting, Antonio Manning uh, playing on that left wing side now, whereas he, on Fediastat, he was always the right winger, but I believe played with that right hand stick. Interesting change there, still. Of course, a right hander on that left hand side. He's like me, oh, he can only play one handedness. <laughs> True. Well, I mean, hey, some players, some players can hop back and forth, you know, especially those who are used to the 1v1 side of things. I mean, hey, yeah. change the handedness based off of where you're playing at the time. But it is interesting to note the handedness because obviously mm -hmm. some people like that extra protection along the boards by being the handedness of whatever side you're on. A lot of people, though, do prefer those one-time opportunities. Yeah, and we saw a few times, especially in the playoffs with Javi, when they had Han Salino, that just without that one-time option, there wasn't enough threat. That one sent all the way down to the H-371 zone. We'll have another foot race for the puck. This one, one out by Arubita. So a face off back down in the Urubur zone. Still waiting for the first breakthrough here in this first period. An offensive zone face off for HV71. Finally starting to get some momentum established after that close call and the great pass from Antonio. And here they go again. Back across and he didn't get all of it. Ellie Kamel able to make the save. That allows his back end, decent opportunity. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't look like he could pivot quite in time to get that one time off. Still got a backhand look out of it, but that's another good, in tight, thread the needle pass from Antonio. He's having a good first period so far. Ansku has possession of this one only momentarily. I am not sure what's going on right now with uh, Dembski. Interesting times there. Antonio Manon not able to hold on to this one. Sorry, cutting back towards the point. Good movement here and picked off by Rubitas, loses it. Forces a save from Kofalainen and it'll lead to an attacking zone drop at Urubro. This could be a good opportunity for Urubro here and, you know, it's, it wasn't, it was just a, a little bit of forward checking pressure which led to it. It can't be considered lucky, but it's the little things like this that you want to capitalize on. Good one-timer, better save, Kofalainen. Strong performance here in the opening period for both netminders so far, Sid. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we knew Eli Kamel was much, much better than his numbers after the first two games. So far, he really has shown that with those two big saves, one up Dembski and the other off Madaliska there as Kofalainen comes up big on the blocker twice. Big saves there indeed. I'm liking the movement, though, from Urbro off of these face-off wins. Definitely. They're not really staying stagnant here. They're really trying to, you know, get their get their bodies moving, which they know will open up some of the uh, room there from the collapse. HV71, good defense so far across the course of this season and in this game as well as they have yet to really surrender a ton of those, you know, A-grade opportunities. So the test here just about at the final minute of play. And, of course, it'll be a fast final minute. Antonio Manon's able to pick that one up and has it knocked right back to the neutral zone. Loose puck. Rubitas is there. Maybe one more attacking bid here. Battled on. Antonio Manon still there. Has it down low. Where's he going to go? Dembski passes it. It's blocked. What a chance for Kauto. Right at the end of the period. Crucial block. Robbing the rookie of his first ECL Elite Division goal. Just a very, very great set play right there from HV71. The read by Kauta to jump into the play with time expiring. There's really no risk to that. And I really liked it, though. He kind of slipped in undetected. Tremendous vision coming out from, I believe that was Dembski there, from that behind the net position to find him out front. And there was space on that glove side of Eli Kamel. Just as he said, unfortunately, I believe that hit a leg out front. Huge shot block at the end of the period. We... We see it a lot here in the ECL Elite. A lot of those kind of late goals late in the period that can really kind of uh, change the pace of the games here. That was just a quick tic-tac pass and just unfortunately for Kauto, too much traffic there as it does indeed hit uh, what looks like the shin pad of uh, one of the white jerseys in front there. So we remain scoreless after that first period. Chances for both of these teams 
HG71, you could argue maybe has the slight edge in that, but overall, very even game. We'll see which team is going to be able to kind of get the advantage here, up the pressure in this second period. There we go. Second underway. Again, elite division action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm, Kovalon Lakritsi, and ST Hockey. Let's see what happens here again. Both these teams, one win through their opening two games of this 30-game regular season as Baker, the team leading score, cut to the middle shot and nearly found the back of the net. My goodness, does he look dangerous so far in this game, and that's a dangerous shot. It's a goal. Urubro strike first. It's Jansku finding the back of the net. Just a little bit of a pinballing puck right there, finding its way to Jansku's stick in a dangerous position right there in the high slot. Kofalainen caught uh sliding one ray and gets beat on the glove hand side he was almost beat there by the first initial shot off of the zone entry i believe it may have kind of uh at least glanced off the post i didn't hear the sound but the way the puck ricocheted in the corner looked like that edibro stayed on it stayed aggressive and we're able to get that goal shot on paddled away there by ellie kamel is there a hockey striking first? Jansku's second of this young season. Pikery went for the spin move. Pass back in front, broken up. Here we go, Buna. Now for Jansku behind the back of the neck. Great movement here across and just kicked away by Kofalainen. And Sin, this is Pikery's first season since ECL 10. He was with the Kobe Esports squad at the time. And my goodness, is he looking maybe as dangerous as I can ever recall seeing him. Absolutely. I mean, the amount of times that you're calling out his name, he's just a little bit everywhere. And that's exactly what you want to be seeing from your centerman. Antonio Manon trying to hold on to this one. Adelaiska picks off a pass. Now they get it down low to Dembski. Back to the point. DDD one-timer good save by Ellie Kamel off of a deflected shot. Another shot and a good glove save there. Interesting look from Dembski, just not able to pick that corner. Yeah, I think he went for a little bit of the toe drag shot, but didn't quite get the amount of power on it that I'm sure he wanted. And uh, might have been looking to pick the corner there as it was gloved, however. There was some traffic out front. And you never know with the rebounds in this game what could have happened afterwards. There we go. It is Urubro in possession off the draw. Not for long. Picked off by Dembski. Now Antonio Mann and tries the shot. Good save again. By Ellie Kamel, excellent positioning. The Eurobro netline. Yeah, so far so good for Eddie, Ellie Kamel as the pressure's kind of mounting as HV71 trying to get that uh get that goal back that they surrendered just a few minutes ago. I like that from Antonio Manon. You know, usually pass first mentality, but tries the five hole there and just gets denied. Madalyska now nearly got it to Dembski, just couldn't find it. Captain again down low. Antonio banks it off the back of the net. Might have wanted to wrap around or just the outright bank. Off of the back of the goaltender, and we've seen that a lot mm -hmm. in NHL 22 so far. Yeah, and maybe uh, perhaps uh, none more creative than the way Nikki dangles for H Reds does it. He kind of goes around the net and then takes a very, very brief slap shot uh, still before he even crosses that goal line, too. It's a very interesting and unique style, but we've seen it work on multiple occasions. Rubatov's back in possession, shot deflected. Good job by Migo Buna. Picked that one up after it lost a bit of steam. Pass off the mark. It is HB back in control. Madalaiska trying to avoid the pressure. Halfway through this second period. A little bit of space here for Yakari. Has help shot. Save. Kofa Leiden. We go Buna's back in. Maybe not the shot he was looking for. Turns it over. Drop pass at the line. Kauta. See what he can do. Down low Antonio Manon. Finds its way to Rubitas. Now Dembski at the point. Good cut in. Shot blocked. Rebound. Madalaiska denied on the backhand. Great work from Eli Kamel. Absolutely. His positioning so far flawless. Not really oversliding at all. Tracking the puck extraordinarily well. And there's been a lot of lateral movement. That's in front of the backhand. Just wide. Good looks for both teams. Here pass across. Just doesn't find its intended target. Kept in off of the pinch. Now it's Jansku's shot. Paddled away by Kofalainen. And Pikare goes down. Delayed call here in favor of Urubro. Yakari shot is blocked. And we will see the Urubro power play for the first time in this game. It's been making passes, making good defensive plays, getting scoring, chan scoring chances, and now drawing a penalty as well. That'll be Man uh, Antonio sitting in the block for two, 
two minutes here and a huge chance for Edinburgh to double up their lead right here. See what happens off of this faceoff. Great opportunity. Indeed, double up that lead. Faceoff one clean by Dembski. Failure to clear for Rubatas off of the pressure there from Jansku, but now on the second attempt, the puck sent all the way down. Got a bit fortunate right there, did Rubatas? Could have just kind of skied it over and said went for the slap shot and almost paid for it. And here now tangled around the fence. One timer just wide. What a bomb of a shot from Migo Buna. Just didn't have the accuracy. Kofalainen was sliding, but wasn't. Still pretty centered in his net, however, so it was a good job of positioning by him. Good drop pass, great movement, another crucial block there. Puck one back, thrown on. Kofalainen's going to have to send that all the way back to the neutral zone. Good job maintaining the line here. We are back to five on five, though. Baker with a pass in front. Kauto there to intercept it. Owen Power esque. A chance for Yacher, the slap shot denied by Kofalainen. Different looks here, one-timer save, and another chance in front. He just couldn't get the shot off. Great pressure from Urubro. Playing some of the best hockey I can recall them playing, and they look fantastic. Absolutely, the pace is really ramping up here, and they just keep increasing the pressure. However, will be sort of stifled now by icing the puck right there. And HG71, I mean, defending to a, to a decent degree, but really right now it's Kofalainen and having to make some tough saves here as Edebro just keeps coming wave after wave after wave, but maybe a chance here for HV71 to get a late heartbreaking goal. Only eight seconds, Antonio Pac in front, broken up. Now back to Rubitas, three seconds, shot blocked, one more chance, shot blocked again. And that will bring us to the end of the second period. Jansku, get another look at it, the only goal of this game so far. That was when he looked like he was going for a pass and ended up hitting off a defending player. He picks it right back up and catches Kofalainen, sliding to his blocker side by going back across his body to that top glove side. And, and again, we, we saw someone else shoot for that same angle a little bit before that glanced off the post. So perhaps uh, that was a bit of a scouting report for Edinburgh to target uh, that side. But you can see from the numbers there, they started to take a little bit of command there. Three more registered shots, about a minute more of time on attack. And, while they did have an advantage earlier on, that advantage has increased a little bit more. And that last sequence before the icing, I think for about, you know, the last, really after the power play that Edebro had, they had all kinds of momentum. We've seen sometimes failed power plays lead to momentum going back the other way, but that wasn't the case for Edebro. They just kept pushing, kept pushing, staying hungry, kept getting chances there. And it was Kofalainen and kind of the defense really in desperation mode to keep that alive and keep it out. But going into the third period here, no goal for HV71 quite yet. And with only the two goals so far this season in two games played, it's starting to maybe look like, at least early on, their offense not quite clicking. Rubitas has it here. Kauto, good D to D passes. Shot gets through. Another great save by Eli Kamel to stick with that one. There we go. Yakari chance shot. Good save by Kofa Leiden. Looked like there was some space. Top shelf blocker side. Just couldn't get the shot over there. We called it out in the preseason breakdown that we had talking about every team. But Eli Kamel. Stronger netminder than what his numbers happened to be last season. Stronger than what they've been this season so far. As that one's rocketed through the slot. He's proven it here. Good block there. Puck bouncing around. And Rubita's second effort. Not only blocked the shot. Get it away from danger. Rubitas has it here. Back for Antonio Mana. Shot rebound. Great job. To take that one away. And who else would it be? Pickery was there. Has it again here. Pass across. Ran out of room. That was Terity stepping up. Tremendous work here. Particularly from Urbro Hockey. They've looked tremendous as Antonio Manic can't walk through. Rubitas holding it in for HP 71. Kauto. Dembski. Antonio. Now Dembski again. On the back for Antonio Manon, running out of room. Rubitas pinches in to keep this one alive. Turns it over, wins it back, pass, shot, scores! Dembski has the game-tying goal. It's one apiece. 
in. Some uh, fortunate bounces now going both ways. Absolutely, but that really all starts from HV71 being able to keep that puck in and keep sending it back down low, not allowing Edebro to get a breakout, just keeping that pressure on, not allowing them to win too many of those puck battles there. And, you know, it was... It got a little crazy at first. I thought maybe HV71 was forcing that middle a bit too much. I, you know, also thinking... Maybe uh, there's a time or two when someone should have shot instead of pass, but at the end of the day, it did work out for them right there. That was a beautiful play and quick, in tight pass off of the turnover from Antonio Manon to find Dembski, who is able to pick that corner here when mid about you know half the period left in the third, we're all tied up again. Dembski's first of the year, his first point of the year for the captain. We'll see how Urobro respond. They're in the attacking zone here. Jansku, their goal scorer, he turns it over. Antonio Manon was able to pick that one off. It's Dembski again. He goes down low. Antonio Mann is there. Quick pass to the short side. Nowhere for Madalyska to go. Again, we see that quick movement. Been very impressed with the passing. Madalyska's back to break that one up. Very intrigued to see just how defensive these two teams choose to be. Talked about it before. We've seen teams miss out on playoff spots by goal differential because they were even with the team that finished in eighth. That have actually been this Urubro hockey squad, if I recall correctly. Rubatas has it here. Adelaiska, unfortunately, is just cutting back. Dembski gains the zone only momentarily. Somehow, someway, Huckery just muscling his way through. Again, runs out of, runs out of options, runs out of runway. Four minutes remaining here. Again, if we go to overtime, sudden death rules. We stick with it until there's a winner. Yakari went for that puck chop, just not able to get it. Positioning again by Rubitas. Loving the forechecking pressure coming up from Edebro right now. They just, you know, they'll pressure, then they'll fall back, then they'll pressure again and fall back. It's a shot on from Madaliska at a tough angle for Sonelli Kamel to make a save right there. But that's exactly what you want to see uh, from a team like Edebro, especially in a tie game. Keep that aggressiveness up. Keep trying to force those turnovers. Don't allow your opponent anything easy. Don't give him any ice right there. And, you know, I really, really like that sort of play style coming up from Edebro here down the stretch. Loose puck, a little bit of trouble here for Terity, battling with Antonio Manon. Bruna, of course, back there to help out as well. Loose puck nearly kept in. Face off will be in the neutral zone here with 134 to play. Let's see what happens here. You see the face off advantage 13 to 6, make that 13 to 7. In favor of HV71. Dembski, of course, struggled in that opening series. He's been great. In this one, and an interesting moment here. Urubro, go back to the power play for the second time. Arubatas. Getting called that's for a trip there, Sid, and that's not exactly disputable. Yeah, absolutely. That's just a time you don't want to ever take a penalty right there. Rubitas sitting in the box in the last minute of the third period here. So it's that slower clock situation, 57.7 in Edinburgh. Didn't capitalize earlier, but they do have quite a strong power play so far over the course of this season. It was about 28% coming into today, but get that initial, uh, HV71 does get in that initial clear. Again, they clear it out again, 45 seconds to go. Now, Sin, of course, it's a, it's a real time minute to begin with. So how much does that benefit the clock? At the very least, gives them plenty of time to work with Terity. Down low, short side, Ben Yakari, puck still loose, and it's in, but it's being called off by the ref. I wasn't sure if that puck was still live. Yeah, it's exceptionally hard to tell there as it looked like the goaltender was getting the, the, the cover animation. He ends up getting actually pushed into the net, so yeah, indeed, that one will not count despite crossing the goal line somewhere in Kofalainen's pad, so the power play here will continue. Close call there, again on the short side bid. An offside call there, great job by HP71 to patrol the line. Sim, we've seen that quite a bit so far in the early stages of the season. Team's doing a great job of keeping the team with the man advantage out of the attacking zone. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it's so, so important. And that's why, especially now, that first clear on that uh, power play is great. Great keeping, though, by Migo Buna. 
Charity at the point. 12 seconds. D to D. Miko Buna. Shot. Big stop there. May have clipped the side of the net. Another shot on the short side. Puck still loose. Bouncing around. Loose puck again. Kauto going to try to kill the clock. And he does. Both teams will secure a point here in game one. Ali Kamel talking about a game saver. He made some great stops. Including this one, Sin, that you know doesn't look like much, but can be a little bit tricky. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, going back to that chance off the power play, does Jansko want to say who's who got that one-time shot off? It was, I think it hit the goaltender and then ricocheted a little bit off the post. I heard the ting coming out right there. So a close call and the follow-up opportunities as well. <laughs> However, it was not bad defense. A Antonio got there to try to cover that. The puck, It just kind of went through his skates right there. So... An unfortunate break for him, something that I'm sure he's not too happy about. But HD71 do have to be happy about coming away with the point here in that game, especially with the power play late in the period. They will have to carry, uh, kill off a bit of carryover time, about a minute of it, but it will be fast clock. It will be starting in the neutral zone here. So and unless Edebro can really establish themselves early on, it shouldn't be too much of a threat here. But overtime, we've seen quite a few of them so far over the course of of this season very young season and we got it right again when will it end wednesday right back to where it always is we have 40 seconds to go on the urabro power play and sudden death overtime rules here's peaker he draws the trip and it'll be 18 seconds worth of five on three time as Demski, crucially the captain takes the penalty here yeah, held on to that defensive skill stick just a touch too long. Ends up getting caught in the skate, so he'll be sitting. This face-off is massive here. Picari really needs to win this. And he does. Migo Buna's pass off the mark. Yakari looking across. Nearly found its home and a great second chance. For Picari there. Yakari not able to hold on to this one. One and a half to go. It's now five on four. Puck bouncing and held in by Migo Buna. Good movement, shot taken away, picked out of the air by Rubitas, who successfully clears. That's off the skate of Antonio Manon. Now 50 seconds to go here on this power play. Another offside call. HV71 got to try to settle down right here. They're starting to, uh, you know, get into that situation with the penalties and... Uh, they're starting to kind of snowball here. They want to definitely stop this, especially considering the game is in overtime and Edinburgh has been a team, at least so far in this matchup, to really sort of ca capitalize on the momentum being given to them. So they can finish off this kill, HV71, right back to square one. Got to try to get their own legs going again. Poked right back out, and that will do it for the man advantage. Great work there. HV71 survive. Uh, the pair of the situation. This one sent over the glass, and we'll have a face off again back in the neutral zone. Of course, HB71 getting the better of the face offs here throughout this game. They win another one there. Puck down low. Madaliska wins that foot race. Good pressure here from HB71. Urabro able to survive it. Have numbers now down the other way. Bigarin, great sauce look there for Terity. Just went off the skate. Antonio Mana for Dembski and this time to Madaliska. Yeah, HV 701 really trying to find their footing once again. You know, it can really kind of shift the momentum, uh, you know, compounding your penalties uh, like they did here. So they need to just try to get themselves in the zone and begin to tilt that ice back a little bit in their favor because as of right now, Edebro getting the better of things. Chase attempt here from Urbro trying different looks. Antonio Mann handled it perfectly. Has it again, tries to cut in, shot block. Dembski feeds it in front and again, just not able. Find the back of the net, couldn't get the most of that shot. Kauta hands off for Rubitas. Heavy four checking pressure here from Urbro, nearly winning it back. Now they do or not. Madaliska actually carries it. That pass off the mark. No icing. Nico Buna tries the quick out. Finds Jansku. Loose puck. Jansku again. Wrap around. Save by Kofalainen. 
Yeah, not quite the animation that he would have wanted on it, and a little bit of trouble picking that puck up, so the speed on that wraparound also wasn't there, but not a bad look to just throw that on, keep the pressure on, see if they can win this face off here. Not the draw, that shot blocked, loose puck carried away by Dembski. Down low in the corner, Madalaiska, Antonio Mann, and tries to go to Dembski again. Great job by Urobro protecting the slot. What a pass, big shot blocked again by Rubitas. Looking for that glove once again was Yakari there. And now HV Simone trying to come back into the zone themselves. I'd like to see them work the perimeter a bit more before trying to get it to the middle. Spin there, that one banked off the back of the goal. And again, another quick out. Yakari nearly had it. Ends up being offside again, expertly defended by Rubitas. Yeah, he got that first initial pickup. However, it was a, in a bit of a precarious position with one of the, the, the four checking players right on him in position to poke or stick lift there. But fortunately for him, the play ended up being offside. Off the tie up. Good contact. Here's Migo Buna. Romeo Mann, and again, having to drop this one back. Six and a half minutes. Remaining here in this first overtime, we'll stick with this for as long as, ne as is necessary. As Rubitas stops short, Antonio Mann and nowhere to go. He sends that one all the way around. Good pick off there by Madalaiska, but again, the second you get the puck, you have at least one player from the opposition in your face and contesting that puck. Case in point. Antonio Mann. And the duel with Terity, who gets the better of him. Docker. That shot blocks, second chance. What a great save by Kofa Line. Wow, just a positional save coming out. That one blinking, you miss it. But they get a f another turnover, might get most more chances out of it. Kemsky having trouble, Antonio Mann in that. Move it over to Kauto, the defender. Pinching in, short side, and he nearly found the back of the net, great work from Ellie Kamel. Yeah, absolutely, and a good little uh, switch that uh, Kauto did with Madalaiska there, entering on the rush to provide that extra man and get some space on the wide angle to enter the zone, and Madalaiska does a good job of covering him, and I like the aggression of you know, cutting in and putting that shot on for Kauto. Down low, let's see what Dembski can do, exploring his options. Still has it, that shot, rifle just wide. Picks it off again. Damski, nobody home on that pass. They keep it in. Get the final real time, of course, two minutes there. That shot blocked. Gerdy wins it from Antonio Manon. Uses the boards to get it out. Jansku, good quick movement. Yakari carrying in now. Goes down low. You go back to the point. That shot save, rebound. Puck still loose again, taken away by Rubitas. Shot blocked, second chance doesn't go. What an opportunity for Piccadilly one more time. Has it here, banks it off the back. Final minute. That shot stopped again. Yakari looking, slap shot doesn't go. Tried that short side. Unorthodox looks across the board for Urbro in the attacking zone. Gauto shot picked off. Now 45 seconds to play here in what could be the first overtime of many the way these goaltenders are playing. Rubitas will slow things down. I don't know if we're fully in a basketball style shot clock wind down mode. Doesn't look like it now. Madalaiska tried to go to the point. Kauto keeps it alive. Only a man and loose puck. Kauto shot block picked off here by Ayansku. The man on his back drops back. Pikari loses it. Now Yakari. Back to the point. Ten seconds. Garrity shot blocked. Goes to the far side. And a pass off the mark. Condemns us to second overtime, dare I say. Yeah, and that was some scary moments for both sides there at the end. HV71 getting a little bit of pushback with some zone time of their own. But, you know, that, trying to hit Kauto again, which almost came back to bite them. It was a terrific read by the defense of Edinburgh to kind of predict that amount of likes it cutting across the ice. Uh, you know, was going to look for that one-time option uh, high in the zone for Kauto there. And it was a good adjustment, not committing to the uh, collapse uh, Edinburgh instead, kind of sending a man up front. They read 
They read it perfectly. Almost got them a really good break the other way, as you mentioned. It was just a tremendous uh, defensive effort from the back track. I believe it was Antonio Mana just with that skill stick out all over the guy trying to carry that puck. Really didn't have any space to cut in towards the middle. Had to stay wide. And I mean, look at the amount of shots from Edinburgh. 21 registered shots. You love to see it. It's created a lot of excitement. It's had, you know, forced Kofa Linen to have to make some tough saves. They've even had some miss wide hit, hit off the posts as well. And I, this game so far has been terrific, exciting, and it's just a first of two between these guys. There we go. Second overtime underway. Just 19 seconds in, we have a stoppage of play. And passing percentages for both teams hovering around that 80% mark. A little bit over, a little bit under. You saw in the sin mentioned, of course, with the player builds possession is king in this division. Good shot. Pinch in by Migo Buna. That pass broken up. Let's see what Antonio Manning can do. Adelaide is with him. This one going to be held in by Kauta. Antonio Manning looking around the back. Mr. Rubitas and again down low. Rubitas at the point. Too many D to D looks for 71 Spin, shot, broken up. Still contested now out to the half wall. Great stick lift there. Fortunately, it doesn't lead to much. That was a really dangerous chance coming out from HV71. Beautiful uh, edge work and, and skating from Antonio to get the spin across. Look to the middle. The puck kind of bounced, but it actually precariously bounced out into that low slot as Ellie Kamel was kind of uh, off of that screen right post a little bit. Had a HV71 stick been able to get to that, could have seen the end of this game if they were to, able to just tap that one in. But play continues on. Edebro did a good job clearing the zone with their collapse. Kauta. Tries to go back down low. Tony O'Mannon on the off wing. Find that breakthrough being held to the outside. Dembski denied by the glove of Ellie Kamel. Big, big save there from Ali Kamel and a lot more patience coming out from HV71. They're taking it on the perimeter a little bit before they try to get into the middle and that's forcing Edebro to have to come out from their positions, come out from perhaps where they're comfortable and it's opening up a little bit more space for HV71 to be able to work it towards that middle there. As speaking of working into the middle, past the Yocker, he just pricked off. That Elias got Charging down low, Terry picks it off. Trouble here though, Madalaiska has it again, wanted that short side. Parity can do, goes to the far side. Here's Jansku again. Had a steam wrap around, picked off. Throwing everything at the wall that they can for as much as you would have thought this Uroboro offense would have another rather potent day. Both line and after giving up the opening goal of this game has shut things down. Just a stalemate that we are still enduring here. Tony O'Manon. Double team pressure, nowhere to go. Trying to win it back, they do from Terity, still bouncing around. Antonio again, trying to get back to the forehand. Shot, kick, save. Taken away by Onsku. That's intercepted by Kautum, and just like that, under eight minutes to go. Here in overtime two. Adelaiska. Had a steam, picked off by Terity, still fought on for Dembski's there to assist. Picked off by Terity. We will find this next goal, the winner here. Third game of the season again for both of these teams. Three down, 27 to go. We have five minutes left. Again, all three forwards for Urbro up high before backing off there. Trying to force the issue. There is a delayed call, and for the first time in this game, HV71 will be the team with the man advantage. They've yet to get a power play goal this season. What a time it would be to get this one, as that will be. Bikari heading to the box for tripping. So that's Edebro without their center, and in a game where Dembski has been pretty good on the draws, could be good, or it could be, well, he's not used to the guy taking the draws, and he gets beat here, which we often see. Tie up here, Antonio Mannon, wrap around, bid, and he scores! 
HV71. It did not take too long on their first power play opportunity of the game. And we have a winner here in double overtime. Antonio Manon is the hero. His first goal for his new club. Big, big goal from Antonio and as well. Getting the first power play goal of the season is HV71. You like to see it. He saw him kind of go for something similar a little bit early. A quick wrap around just kind of, you know, on that backhand as well. And that time pays off. Tough angle, but maybe banks in off Ellie Kamel and HV71. Get that extra point and... That's that's an incredible job by them, capitalizing on the opportunity presented to them by Edebro after, I mean, a back and forth game between these two teams, which could have seen many more goals than we did. Big shout outs to Kofa Linen and Eli Kamel for being as good as they were and keeping that game close and exciting as it was in double overtime. When will it end? Wednesday is off to a strong start. I believe that's just our first game of four here in this particular broadcast. Highly contested, a 2-1 victory. And now both teams, I do believe. Actually, no, it's for Orbro now, two and one on the season. I was gonna say HV1, HV71 falling to one, one and one on the season at this stage. I thought their first loss was in regulation. I mean, since. Uh, very, very competitive game between the two. What stands out for me, 0 for 3 for Urbro, 1 for mm -hmm. 1 on the power play for HV71. Definitely, that turned out to sort of be the difference here. I mean, after the first one, we saw Edebro really kind of getting a lot of momentum from their power play, some good chances as well. But yeah, not being able to capitalize on it turned out to be the difference in this one. And it was just right off the draw. It wasn't anything really fancy here. It was just Antonio Mann and coming around that net and getting a quick shot off as we're going to get another look at it there. Looks like off the post and then off of the back skate of Ellie Kamel, seemingly like maybe it was going to trickle across the line initially without that contact. Hard to say there from that angle, but this was a massive, massive goal. That was the uh, game at tying goal right there off the blocker and in on a, qu a quick little uh, in tight pass from Antonio there after retrieving the puck from the man in the corner. Just good forechecking going on and. This was the one right here. It was an attempted pass that kind of banked off, probably really confused the goaltender. Going for that that one-time option that we so often see, which a lot of teams utilize, sneaking in that defenseman and uh, for that one time and having a forward pass the puck to them, but instead off the skate of the HV71 player. And that really kind of led to a Kofa line and having some trouble tracking that puck. You can see he was sliding over, then stopped and had to adjust to the man picking up the puck and then going laterally again. They're able to cut back in on that glove hand side. But at the end of the day, HV71 do win the game in overtime and will pick up the two points, which brings them to 2-0-1. Good start. Not too bad, all things considered. With that, we'll get you guys a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll set the stage for game two, which I imagine these two teams. I mean, I don't know, Sim, after a game like that, do you want to take a break or do you want to get right back to it as soon as you can? And hey, we'll, we'll see. We'll see you at the end of the day. So, again, we'll be back in a few moments. Game number two between HV71 and Uruboro Hockey coming up in just a few moments. So, with that, everybody, again, a big thank you to uh, Wilhelm Kovan Lakotsi and ST Hockey, of course, for sponsoring this season and the entirety of ECL 22 here. Of course, Doogie and Sin joining, uh, joining all of you guys here in our opening week of the Elite Division, the festivities that have been going on course in the changes you know we have those sunday primetime games which again a friendly reminder this sunday of course 1745 cest again on sundays we start two hours earlier than what we do on monday and wednesday you guys will see hv71 in action again as they'll take on ymca esports h reds taking on goons so again that is this sunday 1745 cest again two hours earlier than our normal start times that'll be every sunday throughout this season now sin as we turn our attention to game number two between these two clubs want to talk about urubro here i mean you can see them we're almost ready to go for the second game their offense looked phenomenal through the first two periods of that game especially those first two periods just one goal to show for it very yeah. surprised by that. I think it's a combination of the you know, adjustments HV71 made and Kofalainen had another fantastic game. Yeah, Kofalainen was absolutely outstanding, uh, especially down the stretch. I mean, some fortune here and there. I think I counted about three 
uh, maybe even four posts that were hit or glanced off of uh, from Edibro there. So, I mean, the, the chances were plenty. You got to think some of them have to start going in for them if, as long as they could stay on it and perhaps get some different looks as well. But uh, HV71, once again, just allowing, you know, a single goal in a game. Not too bad. Goalful line and stats continuing to sort of uh, take off in the way they have at the beginning, uh, since the beginning of this season. But yeah, Edebro definitely going to want to get some more goals on the board there because on the flip side of things, LA Kamel was solid in that their defense was pretty solid at limiting some of the HV71 opportunities here. So it's a big, big chance and some that Edebro doesn't want to let get away from them here in game two. They got to find a way to get a few more goals. They're able to get like three or four. HV71 hasn't been able to show so far this season that they, that they could uh, keep up with that sort of scoring pace. So I think that's priority number Number one here for Edebro is to kind of open up that scoring and get definitely a couple more goals. Stay on it the way they've been doing, just capitalize, which of course, easier said than done sometimes. Again, a little bit later on in this broadcast, the Fallen Coal Miners will be taking on Conquer Gaming. For now, though, we focus on game two in the regular season matchup. It is HV71 in their Road Whites taking on Urubro Hockey. And a two to one double overtime victory for HV just moments ago. Continuing the pace with an early offside call. We kind of saw this a little bit in the first game. It took, uh, took a while for it to get going. The neutral zone was a, a pretty big battleground, which we used to be able to say was pretty much like clockwork, but not so much here in this iteration of NHL. And, you know, it's been a lot more faster pace getting going, less of the kind of neutral zone trap games uh, setting up. But, you know, when we saw in the last game, it really started to open up there in the second, third period, and at times in overtime as well. Madaliska ahead of steam and a miscommunication with Antonio Manon leads to another early offside call here against HP. And it was Antonio Manon getting his first goal for the club, a double overtime winner. And joining this team following the really shocking turn of events of a playoff team last year, a semifinalist in Granite Gaming choosing to go their separate ways and Kofalainen again holds one off the line. You got to wonder if that one would have been called off as well. And could very well have been. I think that was Picari once again, just kind of driving the net, being a little bit of everywhere as he was in that first game. And he's going to want to get rewarded with a few points in this one and hopefully the win for his squad too, if he can keep this play up. Stretch pass, able to be handled, and see now what Amigo Buna can do. Tried to feed the man up the middle. Again, that is Picari, the center. Golden helmet for Urubro Hockey. This is Antonio Mann, wearing the team's golden helmet now for HV71. Again, signifying the team's leading score. That's the players to watch out for the most. Antonio not able to hold on to that one. Puck off the side of the goal. A little bit of trouble here. Kofa is just going to hold his ground. And ends up getting the cover. Yeah, the puck eventually kind of bounced it, uh, his way where he could get his glove on it. That's always such a uh, a jarring moment as a goaltender when the puck is right there. And the guy just doesn't seem to want to get his glove on it. Kauta. Play of that one ahead. Now Madaliska again immediately contested. Good interception here and a had a recovery. Kauta making up for his mistakes again. An elite division rookie this season is Kauto. Coming over from Luleo on the pro division. Backhand for Dembski. Just ran out of space. How quickly did that chance develop? That one blocked down by Terity in front. And that was an expertly uh, performed counterattack. Everything but the finish. Yeah, it absolutely was. A pass up the boards to Antonio. The bit of the 2 on one that developed the sauce pass over. But yeah, you said it. Dembski just ran out of real estate as he tried to cut back around the goaltender. And he would have had the space right there. Ellie Kamel did commit. Good block there. Leads to an offside. 8.53 to play in the first period here. to see who finds the breakthrough again it was Urbro scoring the first goal of game number one I think that was in the second period it was the only goal that they scored even through a, a second overtime Dockery held off great pressure there by Kauta 
Very impressed with the rookie here. Of course, the Elite Division rookie, that is. Tony man in great effort. Puck still loose and covered by Ellie Kamel. HV71 starting to find space there in the high danger areas. Definitely finding space, and they're the ones applying all the pressure so far in this first period. Edebro really not able to duplicate what they did in the last game here, and that can't feel too good as HV71 clearly kind of riding the wave of the momentum of that overtime victory. It's puck loose. Vickery has it here, goes back to the point. Shot might have hit the net. Actually, I think it was blocked just before. Got a weird set of circumstances with that one nearly getting through and blocked at the last moment. Again, Urbra forced to reset. Another five minutes to play here in the first period. Again, they go to the dump and chase. We've seen it a few times. And they do win the puck. Miko Buna can't get that one on net. Rubitas. Couple of quick passes. Again, defense to offense for HV71. That puck bouncing around all over the place. Jansko who's able to settle it. Again, just nowhere to go. So much traffic. Every puck highly contested. Garrity's pass is off the mark. Puck loose around the back of the net. Goes back to the point. Shot, what a save by Kofalainen. Sidney had a man right in front of him. He absolutely did. He was able to get the glove on it, and that was about a... Uh... Felt like the 10 minute windup for Terity blasted on was, you know, going back to that glove side as he figured Kofalainen would, you know, overcorrect to that right hand side, but Kofalainen just stayed right where he was and just, you know, calmly put it into his glove and was still scoreless in this first period with time ticking down. It'll be a nice call here. 23 seconds to go. Still some time. Try to make something happen here. See what they can do. Face-offs are very, very close. Tie up. Puck recovered by Onsku. There is time perhaps for Urbro. Here's Terity nearly stepped through. Just stripped of the puck. Migo Buna towards goal, picked off by Madaliska. And a highly contested first period comes to a close without an opening goal. And a save like this from Kofalainen, a big reason as to why, although not the replay I thought we were going to get. Yeah, that was an in-tight opportunity uh, from Picardy there. As he, it looks, he actually did get a bit of a backhand shot away. Initially, I thought he just kind of skated it into the goaltender, but he did manage to get that uh, shot his way as we're getting to see a couple looks. They, they really like having Kauto on that one time. He's been the one to take a lot of their uh, shots, at least from the back end so far, and he's led to some good opportunities for them. I did like HV71's period slightly more than Edinburgh, though we did see start to see some pushback from them. But it was this opportunity that was really stood out here. Tremendous saucer pass. And unfortunately for uh, Dembski, he couldn't really wait out Ellie Kamel more than he did. He kind of, you know, was completely out of room. He had to stretch uh, to grab that saucer pass and had so much speed because he had to beat the defenseman. And Ellie Kamel just able to keep that one out. That's the difference maker so far. 0-0, zero, zero, it remains. Second period underway again. ECL Elite Division action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm, Pokemon Lacrity, and ST Hockey. This is the second game of two, the regular season matchup here. Week one of the ECL Elite Division. It should be 71 winning game one over Urbro Hockey. Two to one in double overtime. It's both of these two teams, perhaps playoff aspirations at the very least, looking to hold their position within the elite division heading in to the ECL 23 season. So we'll be coming to you this fall, at least our winter season. Perhaps even in the winter, maybe more applicable. Again, Kauto, very, very impressed with him so far through what we've seen here, but the defense gets caught in an elected pass when maybe, just maybe, Yonsku should have carried it. Although I'm sure he'll feel hard pressed, but not completing that pass. Almost no reason to not expect him to. As here's Antonio Manon. That big spin to the middle doesn't go. Stan, how do you, how do you read that one? The Yansku pass. Did yeah. He held it, or did, it looked like the right play. It, it, he could have gone either way. It was the right play in the sense that his man skating with him had the step. It would have been a better position. He had more of an angle. 
he could have ran some interference a little bit by you know skating behind and giving his uh that guy a little bit more space it's just one of those situations that you feel so so bad about it started with a miscue for hv71 uh just letting two forwards get behind them there and for Edebro being unable to capitalize on that situation not exactly what they want to see especially after a tough first game where they had 21 shots and only one registered goal Outlet pass picked off by Terity. He's able to withstand the pressure. Dumps that one in. Halfway through the second period. As a result, halfway through the game, Urubro again, three forwards in the attacking zone, trying to keep that pressure up. They take away those outlet passes, but they find a way here. It's Dembski, Antonio Manning around the back of the net. Not able to hold on to it. Good movement there from Arobro to get it out. Terity, his pass off the mark. See what Antonio Manning can do now down the other way. Drops off for Dembski. On the back again. A lot of space at the point. They like not to go there and ultimately run out of space. Bikari, a little bit of space. Tried to float that one through. Yakari wins it back. That chance, good save, Kofalainen. Not a ton on that shot from Jansku. That one denied as well. Loose puck still in front. Shot scores! Relentless pressure from Urubro for the second game in a row. They strike first. Hickory doing what he's done already a couple of times this season, Sin, finding the back of the net. Yeah, that's a major goal for them right there as they finally get rewarded for some of the uh, the pressure that they were mounting right there as it really felt like HP71 would sort of bend and not break and survive the onslaught once again. But Picari comes in, cleans up some of the loose trash in front, puts it behind Kofa line, and once again, Edebro jumped out to the 1-0 lead. But five minutes left in the second, a little bit less time for HP71 to get back in this one, but it is only the one goal. Adam Leisk at least able to get that one out of the zone. We'll see if Urubro can do what they were unable to do in game one. Can they get an insurance goal? Again, Madaliska battles his way through. Here's Dembski pass across. Nobody home. Kauto shot, save, rebound, Antonio, man. And just ran out of real estate. There's the quick exit down the other side. Here's Jansku. What a sauce, but what an interception by Rubitas. Kauto gets that one out. Pace really picking up here. Antonio Man along the wall. Had Arubatas down low. Dembski covering for him at the point. There he is. Tries to go to Antonio Man. Pickery there to pick that one off. A one minute to play here in the second big spin. Pickery shot. Save. Copa Lennon. What a tempo change in the past few minutes. Absolutely. Just like in the last game, at some point, a, a switch gets flipped and they open things up. That was a great play by Picari. I like that he elected to shoot right there instead of going for the very obvious one time. Because if you saw Kofo Linen, he couldn't commit to getting the shot or the pass and almost ended up keeping, keeping him off guard right there as he had to make another tough save off a one-timer. 20 seconds. Here's Rubatas now. Sauces at the cross on goal. Eli Kamel able to make that save. I mean, <laughs> anyone order a, uh, a a quick change in pace? I mean, this is it. I don't know what the heck happened, but all of a sudden it's just back and forth, back and forth action. Hope it continues in the third there as one time cannot connect. Metalyska was set up for it, but good defense from Yakety. Kill out the clock, and yet again, correct me if I'm wrong, it is Urubro carrying a one to nothing lead into the third period. We'll see if HV71 can strike back. Definitely going to uh, obviously want to, but the game opening up a little bit. I, I it's, it's hard to say who that really benefits. We saw it kind of do the, uh, a similar thing in the last game, and uh, neither team really had an advantage throughout that. It was just incredibly inside, exciting hockey to watch being played. But they might they might be looking to settle things down a bit more here in this third period. You can see HV71 with the majority of the time in attack, but not as many registered shots. Edebro kind of getting back into their style of putting a few more pucks on net once they were able to get in their zone and get that established here. So we're going to get a look at how close this one was. Oh, that's not the one I was thinking of. Well, <laughs> there was a puck that bounced right to Antonio and he just seemingly wasn't able to get the shot away uh, at quick quick enough to, to get a goal there. But, oh well. Replay, replay trolling me. It's fine. <laughs> happens more often than we'd like to admit we go to the third period here again a one to nothing lead for urubro hockey let's see 
If they can shut things down and get that extra point. Again, just missing out on the two points in the prior game. Let's see how this one goes now. Again, the early offside trend continues. Rubatus battling Picari here. This one rocketed around. Miko Buna handles that one well. Quick out again by Miko Buna. The defense for Urbro utilizing those slap shot passes incredibly well. Here's Bakery, a little bit of space. Pass in front, and Yakari just couldn't get a clean piece of it. Another opportunity again, just out of his reach. As he gets absolutely floored by Dembski. Tony O'Man in the kick to the tape. Shot on from Madalaiska, Eli Kamel all over it. Frantic pace. That's the, really the best descriptor for this. Yeah, I love coming out from Miko Buna loves that slap pass off the boards. I think that's about the fifth time that they've utilized that. And you can see why it works to perfection. He aims it properly. Starts a quick counterattack going the other way. And HC71 really have to press to get back on that back check, which does have a kind of a, you know, Works in a couple ways. You know, they, it spreads the game out, but also it drains the HV71 stamina bars on defense. Pass across, clips the post. Great chance for Madalaiska. Again, Rubitas takes that one away. HV71 so close yet so far to tying this one up here in the third period. Gonsku now. One timer scores! Migo Buna! And Aura Bro have that breakthrough, that insurance goal that they desperately needed. That was a massive goal right there. We haven't seen them utilize the uh, the one time from the D a whole heck of a lot. Uh, at least not as much as HV71. I guess everything's uh, relative here. They have utilized it, you know, a few times, but that time it comes in clutch, hits off of Kofa line and, and in the back of the net there, and a quick timeout coming from HV71. They want to get their salmon bars out. They understand they're running out of time, and now it's not just a one-goal deficit, but it's a two-goal deficit that they have to make up for. Going to see the double timeout coming out, I guess, and that's just a, a great play. And, and Kofa Leinen, I wouldn't – I don't know, just not off on his positioning, just maybe a little bit deep in his crease right there, which, you know, kind of ended up with it uh, hitting off of him and then going in the back of the net here. So H371 now – they got to throw everything at the wall, see what'll stick here because they need two goals and they need it quick. 13 and a half minutes to play. Again, Erebro weren't able to find that insurance goal in game one. Led to an overtime loss. They do get the extra goal here and good job there by the defense to take that one away. Yakari, a little bit of space, tried to cut in. And good work there by the HB defense. So both teams now just two goals at this stage. Excuse me, not the two goals there, but uh, if you look at the lack of goals, is what I was alluding towards sin. Yeah. I mean, again, it was the, the two goals for HV71, now three in favor of Urbro. A bit of a low-scoring affair uh, compared to what it looked like we might get based off of the pace. Yeah, and HV71 at this point just continuing to try to get pucks to the net and towards the middle of the net. They're just kind of just a, a bounce or two away or just from getting a goal here, and they, but they're keeping on it. That one banks off the back of the net. Big shout out to Estor, giving us the road scores elsewhere as that one just wide. Back, back in front doesn't go. Great chances all started with that Kauto slap shot from the point. Unfortunately, they'll be offside here. Sinem really does look like, though, HP 71, understanding the situation and putting on no. A little bit more pressure on the defense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are just... I mean, uh, yeah. It, it, kind of all over Edebro right now. And Edebro is almost seeming like... Not that they took their foot off the gas, but they're more in a survival mode rather than trying to counterattack as well. But here they go, entering the zone. Oh. Great chance. Better save. Jansku denied. Now seven and a half to go. Edebro that close to... A commanding three to nothing lead. I'm just gonna always love those away scores from Estor as ZSC. Right on top of H Reds, Kauto shot block there. Rubitas tried to go right back to him. Scramble for it, big save there 
on the opportunity from Dembski. Kauto shot and may have gotten a piece of it. Just over the top of the net. Another shot from Dembski and a glove save. Ellie Kamel, the redemption tour after a rough first two games. Absolutely. I mean, he is just everywhere right now, standing on his head at times here for about the last six minutes of this period. It's really been all HV71, and the pressure continues here. They win the faceoff, but Ero does get the clear. Here we go. Puck below the goal line. Erbro, a little bit of trouble. Terity. He's able to chip that one out all the way through. Jansku breakaway. Save Kofalainen. Should be good to go here after that brief loading spell. Two and a half minutes to go. Kofalainen doing everything he can to keep his team in it down the stretch, but they are running out of time. Dockery able to dangle around. Puck goes back. And now dumped in. Time continues to, uh, to you know, tick off the clock here. Chance there, glove save, and again, it's Ellie Kamel. What a performance tonight, Sin. Absolutely. He has just been phenomenal. Both goaltenders really still, even though Kofalainen has surrendered a couple in this game. I mean, the goaltenders here, that's really been the story. Offense has been easy to, well, yeah, pretty easy to come by for both of these teams and these goaltenders just making it look easy. Shot save again as that one gets through the traffic. Final 45 seconds here. Good hit. Couldn't get the puck. Sorry, that shot blocked down by Rubitas. Great work. Antonio Manon from Madaliska. They're low on time. Yakri picks that one off, gets it up the boards. Puck can't be cleared. Jansku doesn't need to, but it's passed off the mark there. So we will have an icing call with 23 to go. Intrigued to see if Kofalainen joins the attack here. I mean, do you want to risk the potential extra goal against? And the answer is no. Yeah, they, need to they need to score off this face off, though. If they want a chance to get back in this, they have to break it out. And huge, huge win from Picotty right there. They'll get the clear. Good shot by Kauto to take that one away. Unfortunately, they're offside. I mean, Sin, all things considered, defense and goaltending for HV71, I'm fairly impressed. Yeah. That lack of offense is a little bit surprising. I mean, it might be something that they kind of warm up into throughout the season. They have had some good chances, though. They have had some good chances, but at times they do kind of get caught into trying to get towards that middle, and there's just a bit too much traffic, especially as right there, you know, more understandably towards the end of the game, they have got about four guys around the net here, but... There were some times, uh, you know, in that first game where you could have looked at uh, their play style and thought, okay, well, they're, they're trying to get it to the middle a little bit too quickly here. Um, they need, And they settled into, you know, as that game went on, working the perimeter more to try to open up that space in the middle. Here at the end, of course, they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. You're down by two late in the third. Well, you can't. How much time can you really spend trying to open up the middle? And you probably won't even bait Edebro out of their collapse at that point in the game. So... Kind of a no-win situation for HV71 as they try to make something happen. But yes, it has to be kind of brought up. That this is only, you know, four games played now and just three or... No, four registered goals. I mean, averaging a goal per game, which is what they came into today with. And again, it's not a... It's not too long of a season here. So you don't want to allow yourself to get kind of caught in that sort of... Uh, uh, one goal per game for too, too long. You, you hope they would turn it around here, but in their next matchup especially, they really got to find some kind of way to be able to capitalize on their chances a bit more. But that's a well-deserved shutout from Ellie Kamel. Just 11 saves. It felt like twice as much as that just for the sheer uh, amount of tough saves that he had to make, especially there in that third period. From a 65% save percentage in his first two games... To a much, much better performance here. And again, now the shutout here in game number two. His first of the season. Tremendously done. Urubro able to get the result. Three out of four points on the day. Not a bad day at the office for them. As again, they look to make that playoff picture as the season goes along that much more interesting. You get uh, goaltending like that. It is going to be very interesting for them down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, definitely a, a, a big 
big kind of response from Ellie Kamel and really from the Edinburgh team as a whole. Uh, we we mentioned it in the pregame here. Something's got to give. Edinburgh, you know, they had a pretty rough game. They had a negative goal differential despite having a split on the season so far. Five goals for eight against. And in this one, they only allow two goals. Uh, that's an, an enormous kind of response here from them. It shows that they can prove that, or, or sorry, it proves that they can play that sort of, you know, more well-rounded defensive game while still able to get the offensive necessary and the goals when they needed them. Three out of four points they walk away with out of this. That's, you know, thanks to that first game going to overtime. That's a good result for them. HV 71, two out of four, not bad, but they would have preferred, obviously, at least one more point out of this matchup. So with that, everybody, our first matchup of the day in the books coming up on the flip side of our brief intermission, the Fallen Coal Miners are in action for the first time here on broadcast as they take on Conquer Gaming. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this brief break. <laughs> 